That went well. I really liked that news section. But we are now here to talk about Henry Selleck's latest movie, Wendell and Wild, on Netflix. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, full spoilers. You've been warned. Skip ahead. Pause it. Do the things that you do when we spoil about to spoil something that you don't want to have spoiled. Do that. And if not, well, you've been warned. What do we think about that? Joke. I got a bad joke real quick, guys. You know how I know this isn't a Tim Burton movie? There's people of color in it. Ooh. And that's an original Riley Office right there. And I like Tim Burton. Boy, put some people in your movies. You didn't have to murder Tim Burton on air like No, I, I killed Wednesday. <laughs> buried. I buried Wednesday. To be fair, Luis Guzman. No, no. This year. This year, he's changing. 30 years later, Tim, you're doing it. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Wendell and Wild. Uh, I had a great time. I think it's a, I think it's a, not just a great new stop motion classic. I think it's, it actually has a message that was completely unexpected yeah. and totally like, hell yeah, this is going to raise a bunch of liberals. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I also had a really great time. I thought it looked very good. Um, I really enjoyed the character story. I was beyond pleased when I realized it was radicalizing the youth to understand that private prisons are wrong. Um, <laughs> I'm thrilled with it i loved how this movie looked i loved how um jordan peele and king of michael key they still they still got it they it just never left them but it, they still got it um i really did enjoy a lot of the characters in this movie now also uh, i liked how what you think one character like um we'll talk about it later but how one character might go one way but they actually go a different way and yeah, this is definitely a good time. I liked it. I didn't love it. I was hoping to love it, but I liked it. I don't necessarily think I have anything really wrong with it. it just didn't really hit me the way I wanted it to. Uh, um, I really like the message at the heart of it, though. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really incredible that he made this like stop motion family film uh, about how terrible the private prison uh, industry is um it's kind of it's kind of like how speed racer is all about how, how bad capitalism is and it's wild that that's in that movie um I, I i liked that i thought that was cool yeah um i will say that when the um very clear and obvious donald trump stand-in appeared um <laughs> i was a little nervous yeah, i thought same, like same, i thought same. like oh okay what are, what are we going for here this feels like maybe this isn't quite fitting with what we're doing with the film but then when you hang private prison on him uh that character and his family i was like okay totally totally like this totally on board i i see it i see the vision there was no clearer more direct way to instill into people's minds the kind of person that is running this system than making the contemporary comparison of donald trump i get it yeah it works and and oh like we will we will see that right yeah. Uh, subconsciously, kids might not. Kids, kid, they might not get it, but like they'll see that, and then they'll see a picture of Donald Trump and go like, "Oh, oh, oh the bad man. wait, yeah. connections, yeah. Right. media influencing me." Like, yes, oh, I love it. I uh, the, we don't we don't get many stop motion movies. I mean, we well, like we're getting more. Like, like we get some stuff on like on on this, well, this year. This year's pretty good. This yeah. year's got a pretty good stop motion. Um, we got this and Pinocchio coming out later later this year. Guillermo, that's right, yeah. man. I think, you know, sometimes Netflix, you're doing all right. Yeah. God damn, there's still a lot to come out the rest of this year. I know, we only got two more months. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I, um, I I like the world. I think it's, they give, it is a really fascinating world where like, there's like, there's magic happening and like, you know, like, and, and like, like packs and demons and like, and cults and blah, blah, blah. And like, they give you just enough where like, I didn't need them to explain more. Like they're doing like, they're doing some Blade stuff. They're doing like some Buffy stuff. They're doing yeah, some they Beetle, they're doing some Beetlejuice stuff. Like there's a lot of other movies clearly in this movie, but it all feels of a tone. And like, they don't, I, I never felt like I was missing anything. Like they didn't have to go more into the Hell Maiden stuff. Like I got exactly what I needed. Sure. I didn't need you to go, well, 500 years ago, the first, I didn't need any of that shit. Like it just let me focus on the characters. And like, you got the supplemental material as much as you needed. Uh, I really just I want to piggyback off that. I really love the look and effect of a lot of the Hellmaiden stuff. The mark on her hand oh, I when love it glows it. and it speaks. I, I think that's a, all very evocative. Do that. And um, the sequence where she's bonded and going in and attacking her memories that are restraining her 
and it's like a big monster lady and it's it's but but at its heart is the car yeah and the car accident i'm like what incredible visual design that idea was yeah. to to base all of her problems that she's created for herself her obstacles around this core grief her guilt and the, the visualization of it i thought was so brilliant mm -hmm. and i also thought it was really cool how like never went 100 percent to say that it was wendell and wild yeah yeah so I, it's implied so uh there's two worms that come out of her apple right and we see that happen multiple times in the movie they don't show it once they show it at least two or three times so i thought it was potentially wendell and wild who caused that accident to happen uh, through like this was like a, a pre a pre destiny thing of that's how they get involved and how the story ends up happening. Yeah. Uh, that's just that's just we can read into that. They don't give you any more. Right. I I like that read because it makes it way more sinister because they end up helping her in the end. Yeah. Uh, so like I I like that. When you, well, the worms the worms faces one has a long face one has a has a short face. Exactly, yeah. yeah. When you it, I don't think it's any clearer than when they're they have that shadow image with the car and they they appear on the right and if you look their faces look a lot like Wendell mm -hmm. and Wilde's in that image. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure the implication is that they were the worms. Um, yeah. We, we also get a note of like them mishandling something, but we don't know what it was. So I'm wondering if that's the thing, like what got them pushed down to the duty of like why they're a disappointment and <laughs> yeah. working on, on their father's hair. <laughs> yeah. What, a, what just, again, like, incredible, just uh, the incredible design and unique design of like these two demons are 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 rejuvenating their dad's hair with like magic hair cream that also brings people back from the dead. Like there's so many crazy ideas. Also, like there's a blade movie happening, but there's also Beetlejuice that happens. But also, like she's Buffy the Vampire Slayer and she has like magical abilities. And I'm like, so many cool cool things happening in this movie. I think um, sister, I forget the sister's name, but uh, uh, sister Helly, sister Helly, and her shadow powers. The cool that's the coolest looking thing in the movie to me. I anytime she showed up, and I'm like. Tell me more. I want to know more about you. I think I think something else I really value about the film is that um, it so heavily and prominently features many numerous adult characters who acknowledge and try to care for her at turns. Like we've got the person who's driving her in. Uh, we've got the sister. Like all these people who who are clearly as adults recognizing pain yeah and recognizing something is wrong they're not brushing it to the side they're not saying like get over it they're not ignoring it they are they are directly tackling it and trying it is, to engage with uh, it talk about an opposite of our book club of like how you deal with yes. a kid with dealing with yes. trauma holy yeah. shit yeah Ooh, that's well, a perfect compare that's a perfect uh and you yeah. and you get it and you get it, like obviously the parents for her are like that it's a lot of the heart for her in the film is that her parents were those kinds of people, but it's also it's also reflected in ultimately what they do with Wendell and Wilde's dad. Uh, and even um, the guy, I forget his name right now. Sorry, the guy in the wheelchair. Man, 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 bat, I'll fuck it up. Manfred. Uh, man something. I think it's Manfred. The the way that he says, like, uh, I will I will hunt and contain Manberg. demons. Manberg. I oh, will Manberg. always be against demons, but I'm not against family. And like there, there's this acknowledgement of like things that you, lines that you don't cross, ways that you care for other people. Um, and I think that that's weaved into different character arcs in different ways very well throughout the film. But the fact that like specifically like the the woman who drives her in and, and the sister uh, both look at her and recognize trauma yeah. and try to find their own ways to give her, not push her out, give but, her give the resources. Her, but give her a hand. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of goes into one of the things that I noticed early on about this movie is that while, it, yes, it is very much heavily part of the uh, about the prison industrial complex, um, but it, it's it's also about how the uh, foster system fails kids like her, how it basically feeds the prison industrial complex. We you can draw a direct line from it um right. and and that's deliberate that's capitalism trying to make that the case because those prisons need to make money they yeah. Lo, low yeah low income uh communities often have prisons near them yeah, yeah. because it is it is a direct we know where you're gonna go anyway you have that like, it's the shitty mentality yeah and you the have idea that. that like uh sorry real quickly and and the idea that like uh what well, you're talking about sparks that people are trying to kind of move her away from that system um, at various points in her life uh, because they see that's the, that's the tra trajectory that, that, that they're, that they want her to go in that, be, that the society wants her to go in. 
And so they're trying to like move her. They even say, they kind of like blatantly say that how it's like, oh yeah, when the, we love your school, when the girls don't work out in the school, they'll come to prison down right. the street. Yeah. 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 And I think they do that. They, they give you the visual cues of like what that life like. And it's important that she comes back here and she gets that support system starting to reinstate itself. And she thinks what she really needs is her parents, but actually what's around her is enough. Yeah. Um, but but it's enough only because she went back to this place, right? Because where she was before was pushing her into that narrative that they wanted, right? Was pushing her into that system where it's set up for her to fail. And that's ultimately where she ends up killing the kid. And uh, that's really rough. And ben, you were going to oh, say something? No, I was going to say, like, um, the the whole the, the direct line from, like, the group home, it even, even we don't really see... Well, was I, I had there was a point about the group home that my oh so in the memory flashback where she's finding her memories and you actually get to see the memories of what happens to her throughout after her parents die um when she's sent to the group home the i assume the group home the main owner of said group home her eyes instantly turn to dollar signs so you yeah, know she what owned, the, that's what the that's what the remake of annie is about actually um which is weird for, which is a weird poll i understand but like the idea that these group homes a lot of the people in it are in it for the money because they get money from the government to help raise these kids. And so they mm -hmm. don't, it's meant to be for the kids, but they take it on as kind of a career. Yeah. yeah. Like the, uh, like the, the, the adult we first see the one who's driving the car to, to RBC, you can tell she's like, I want this kid to be better. Like mm -hmm. there's a true sympathy there. Like this is the best shot. Yes. Let's get you, let's get you out of that group home. And I didn't realize that she killed a kid. I thought she just severely hurt a kid. I didn't know she killed him. I don't think she'd be going to juvie if she hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that she's in juvenile, in a juvenile situation makes me think that the kid died. Yeah. Mm. They might have ruled it still as accidental, but I think the kid died. I think it had to be yeah. severe enough where like, ooh, yeah. he, he sprained his ankle. You're not going to juvie for that. Like, Yeah, or, or at least paralyzed him or something. I'm like, yeah. Something bad, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something really bad happened when she defended herself and the kid and the kid suffered for it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you could definitely tell that this is def. This is like, after her parents died, just out of a pure tragedy, and she oh. gets sent to this group home. She get, gets sent to juvie, and then she's in this home or she's in the school where she automatically detects like when she's talking to the headmaster. Whereas like your school's running down, you just want me for the money. Yeah. Also, also as a note, just talking about like the kid, the the killing the kid thing. Um it all shows up in like that montage of her traumas. Right. And I don't think, I, I think to Ryan's point, like I also don't think that really shows up as a trauma if she doesn't severely injure or kill that kid. Yeah. Like it's, it's a traumatizing moment it. for how she feels about what happened. Um, and I don't think you necessarily feel that if they just like break their leg. Yeah. Cause because mm -hmm. not that you wouldn't feel bad, but I don't think you feel trauma. You wouldn't be thinking about it the rest of your life of like, you accidentally knocked something. Like I, I feel like the way she feels about it, it has to be severe. You wouldn't feel yeah. that guilt about it. Yeah. Good point. Um, I will say that uh, I went into this movie expecting Wendell and Wilde to be a smaller presence than what they were. Mm -hmm. And I liked how much they were in it. I do feel like it was maybe a little weighted away from our protagonist more than it should have been. There's definitely a lot of of the the priest man, James James mm -hmm. Hong, yeah, who's who's awesome in this movie. I love his design yeah. of like his head yeah, gets like head cratered gets down, in, yeah. and he's just like, hey, hey, hey. I that is like one of my favorite designs of a character in, in a recent while. Uh, so mischievous, I hate him. So that's my that's kind of my issue with this. I don't think it's paced very well, especially in the beginning. I think it's very slow and a little hard and a little rough to get through. Um, and then, and then I think that once Wendell and Wilde show up, I think we spend too much time with them. And I, I, I kind of like what we're doing with like the priests and, and, and them, but it kind of makes them feel like secondary characters. And I feel, and I felt like they probably shouldn't have been because I, I was much more engaged when we were with, um, Kat. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like, I, I do feel like maybe it's, it's just a little imbalanced and I do feel like the pacing is a little, a little off um, mm -hmm. in parts, not the whole time, but in parts, um, yeah. the, the way that they roll out the introduction of the Claxons and like giving us the information about the things they did is a little, is a little odd. I'll say. Yeah. yeah there was definitely a part where I paused halfway through the movie. And then I realized I had an, an under an hour to go through. I'm like, damn, really? I thought I was almost done. Yeah. So th there were some parts of the movie that did feel like, man, this is kind of, is it over yet? Is it, are we almost there? Mm -hmm. there's going to be some traumatizing 
young images for kids of the um the parents in the car oh yeah i think that yeah. that's a really that's a really effective scene um yeah. and the fact that we when we revisit it too um i thought that was really just like it really hits you yeah and and the again like the imagination of of this movie's oogie boogie who is who is buffalo built belzar yeah who's <laughs> being rames who has who wanted to build a ghost like mini uh amusement park on his belly and his kids also wanted to do to be part of it, but like they didn't agree on it. But in the end, it all works out. And it's like that's I thought I I really liked the the small story between like because like they're oh they're his kids. That's so silly. Why yeah. are you making yeah. them you clean up your hair? That's so silly. I love they, it. they make a better dream fair a fair that where people aren't tortured the entire yeah. time they're on it. Yeah, yeah. and like I, the, the little mural of the dream fair is beautiful. Yeah, I, I agree. I, th I think this, the animation in this is stunning, just in general. I really love all the animation tricks he does here. The the, the dream fair is gorgeous. Um, I I think it ends kind of abruptly with like, um, all my children were lost. Oh, here they are. Yeah, <laughs> um, I felt that I did, too. I did feel like it was a little abrupt, but I like it. I like that it happens. Like I like the, the kind of payoff that those demons that were stolen, uh, that, that those demons that were... Um, uh, that this person has are the kid are the other kids. I see. I like that too. And That's, again, like going back to like it tying into that idea of like connecting to a, you know, he's he's a literal like big demon boss guy, right? And mm -hmm. he has more capability of empathy for recognizing family connections and how important that is uh, than other characters who are bad guys in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Are real bad guys. And I think that that it ties into the theme well. And I I'd agree with you that it would be too abrupt if he was our villain, but he's not, he's just an obstacle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think like the way, the way they ended it and the fact that they ended it while keeping with the theme of like family connections that they were going with, I think makes it work because they're not a real bad guys. The Claxons are a real bad guys. It's, for me, it just felt like, like set up and payoff. Not yeah. so for more, more than anything. Cause yeah, yeah, he is, is like a minor character, mm -hmm. but I feel like. Anything else? Uh, it's really beautiful. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to remember some of the other more minute details of it. Um, I think I think the way the sister travels is super cool. That mm -hmm. that's her power. Yeah. I really love the 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 thing she gets to do when her parents are there and she shows them the vision of the future of the town and everyone coming back. I think that's really nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like Whoa, the right. final I, I like the final battle uh, uh, between all the skeleton construction mm -hmm. crew uh, and our homies. Like throwing throwing water or throwing snowballs and shit. Oh, I really like our trans friend Raul. Yeah, I love the yeah. the fact that it that it's present that it's something that one feels of, like it's there, but it's not like over over. One really. of the most subtle in inclusions of that because like there's one mention of of one of the bullies calling her Ramona. Oh, that's not your name. It's Raul. That's like and it's done sincerely. It's sincere, too. Yeah, yeah, and it's and they don't make a big deal out of it. It's just and like it's that's like, just a character who exists. Yeah, their mother is like the mom on the phone, but you don't hear the mm -hmm. person screwing it up. You just hear the mom saying, "No, my son. We yeah. talked about this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all because it. even then, when I saw Raul for the first time, I thought it took me a second. I was like, "Wait a minute, that's a boy," but we're in all girls' school. Dot dot dot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. it was actually going back to one of the characters that I actually at the end I kind of liked. It was uh, Siobhan, the yeah, yeah. Uh, the daughter of the Claxons, who. Because when you first meet her, you I automatically thought, okay, she's going to be this, this this bully. She's going to be completely insincere. And then as the film continues to go on, it's like, no, she actually is sincere. Mm -hmm. And then when she turns on her parents, it's like, okay, I like when um, she gets pushed into brick falls. I was thinking, okay, this is the moment where she's like, no, you push me. He's like, hey, she just saved my life from this brick. It's like, what? character and even though she was calling her kk and then when cat said no i'm cat she instantly goes okay cat sorry and it's she's like, an, she's annoying but she's sincere which, which it, it yeah. kind of it kind of throws you for a loop because her archetype is generally not and so when oh, you yeah. see her when you see her for the first time you think she's going to fall into the archetype of other similar characters like mm -hmm. her immediately but she doesn't and it's actually a really nice diversion you meet her and you instantly think she's regina george yeah 100 percent you're like, I, that's the Regina George, and these are the mean girls. But then as the movie goes on, it's like, no, she actually does care. And when she finds out about how bad her parents are, uh, and they explain, it's like, oh, that's our entire business model where we do the Break the Cycle program, but they don't because it's then, then we come back into a prison. It's like, oh, they're assholes. 
mm-hmm. which which is also I think another intentional and important adult message, which is saying sometimes your older family members are wrong, mm. and the things they believe in are wrong, and it's important to say I don't agree with that and yeah. stand against them. Yeah, I th- I this is one of those movies where like. I don't think it's like the greatest movie ever made, but like, I think it's message is so good and it's so strong for kids. And it's something that we don't often see where I wish this was like in big theaters. Like I wish this were a big, more bigger profile movie. Cause like it might have like a, a big weekend, but like it's a Netflix movie. It's going to get buried. just like everything else eventually gets buried. And I think this movie is better than getting buried. Right. It was uh, number nine on the most popular Netflix list this week, but you're right. It, that's still oh, but that's the thing. List. That goes back to what I talked about before when we talked about the Witcher, which Netflix is scheduled this year has been awful. They bury so many things that every they shouldn't single bury. day, basically. And so, like, so, like, something like this, stop motion films don't do well in theaters. Yeah, and for for whatever reason, they don't. And it's and I think this film had a larger chance of doing very well Jordan in Peele. Netflix. What? Because of Jordan Peele, right? Putting this on Netflix, I think inherently wasn't a bad idea because if this was released with a good like lead with like a good lead room leading up to Chris leading up to um, Halloween. Halloween. Um, you have uh, nothing around it. Like this could be your big reveal, but because there's other things that came out this weekend, like School for Good and Evil. Yeah. Well, it just kind of, just kind of, you just kind of lose it in the shuffle. I'm just, I'm just saying, like this movie coming out around October. This movie has Angela Bassett in it, who's about to be in one of the biggest movies of the year with Black Panther. Like Jordan Peele is the mm-hmm. hottest horror director around. Henry Selleck hasn't made a movie in a decade. Like this has all the and writings people, for me to and, be in theaters, and people just like when Key and Peele get together anyway. Yeah, hundred percent. So like, I feel like even though yeah, it wouldn't real quick, but it wouldn't make as much money in theaters. It's still, it still, I think has a better chance with everything that's involved with it behind yeah. scenes. Oh no, I was just going to say I was just agreeing with Sparks saying that I am one of those people who always get excited when Key and Peele get back together. Yeah, and and, and like I, and, I love and having. Motion. Sorry, go ahead, Brandon. I was just saying I really love stop motion films. I would have seen this in theaters. No, I was yeah, also I like. What sorry sparks, but what Brandon was saying earlier about how um, stop motion films don't get a lot of, of money in theaters, I'm like that's a crime against humanity. With all the people claiming to how much they love Night Before Christmas, go see freaking stop motion films in theaters. Damn it! To be fair, that movie is like 30 years old now, Ben. So yeah, no, but still, it's also see more. It's, it's also super important that this is black people in stop motion, which mm-hmm. exactly is rare to yeah. non-existent. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, yeah. So I also think that could have worked in its favor for a theatrical run. I, but, again, uh, I, I think Jordan Peele's name alone with Nope this year, like a new animated movie from Nope, the director of Nightmare Before Christmas. Like it, this feels like the, it could have, it could have had at least one good weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, before we get down another rabbit hole about things, I did want to say that I really like the use of just the, the council members, the idea of them, their, their design, the presence of them. I love them. Um, the whole cleaning them up sequence, I think is fun. Them going in and turning the portraits around. I, that's my, like, my favorite them, I think moment. Is really great. I love that moment. And them being like, I, I guess we have to let them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, rah, 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 rah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. They're, they're living. There's um, something I just want to mention that I think is really interesting about the animation. So like a, I talk about like all the time. I love them. Um, they pioneered um, stop motion with like creating different faces. So what you'll what they do is they have like a a line here and then different facial features. They'll like plug in different faces for different um, mouth movements. Mm-hmm. Henry Selleck adopts that. He mm-hmm. uses that because he used it in Coraline. He uses it in this one. But what I found was interesting, uh, and I'm sure this is a stylistic choice. That again, just interesting that. Um, Leica goes in and digitally removes the lines and he from left there, them. and he let and he leaves. I, pr- I noticed that too. I honestly like it. I prefer it because I can. Yeah, I I know they're puppets. It felt tactile. Yeah, like it, it like you're gonna remove a line. Oh no, they look real now. Like I know they're puppets. Like it, it is. It, I actually I really liked it. Uh, uh, whether you did it or not, like it's the same good movie. Like I I like seeing those puppets. Yeah, and I That's just thought that was idea. interesting because some of them have larger gaps in the in the lines than others. Um, I just I was so fascinated by that. I was like, wow, you can really you can really see how they re, to like replace the faces, yeah. for, uh, in the dialogue scenes. Yeah, and, yeah. and and I know we've said it again and again, but like the stop motion is so smooth. Like it's like this is like some of the best stop motion like I've ever seen. Like mm-hmm. it is it is like specifically like in stop motion when people are wearing like fuzzy sweaters you always see the fuzzy riffles and stuff like this movie was so streamlined and smooth it was whether it was digitally done and afterwards or not like it was so it was incredible uh uh flawless looking i loved it 
Did you guys see the post credits? I did. Yeah, did I saw it. Nope, we didn't. What there's is it? A, there's a little. There's a little clip at the at the end of post credits, similar to what Leica does, but it's um someone, an elite animator. It doesn't look like Henry Selleck, um, but he's like, hey, I I'm hearing a noise in the different in the different room. Like like it's cell phone screens. I'm hearing a noise in a, in a in a room, and they go into a different room, and there and you just see the animated stop motion cat like look over like look over the thing and then walk away kind of making a little fun little skit it's cute yeah i just i liked all the concept art that we saw at during the credits did you did you catch jack skellington in the yes i did in the credits i thought that was yes yes i did when Um, we're we're kind of zooming through the when we're kind of zooming through all the skeletons mm -hmm. uh, in the credits one is clearly jack skellington Mm, i didn't catch Mm -hmm. that that's awesome um there, the one other thing I, I really enjoyed about this movie is how different the soundtrack was. Um, even when uh, when Kat's doing her transformation and she turns the school uniform into a punk uniform, I thought that was really cool. The Cyclops, the boombox, and... Uh, oh, I love just, her big, aggressive boombox. Yeah, Cyclops. I love that. I love that. And I, actually, I love her parents, too. Even when they come back. Um, I think, how awesome would it be, like different universe like if her if her parents survived the car crash her dad owns a brewery her mom loves the runs the library i would be living in rust bank going to the brews for books thing the entire time because it's like i get to drink and i get to read this life Mm -hmm. is good yeah yeah they 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 were they were great parents and like the moment where like you see like the skeletons like like start like discombobulating like oh no it it runs out it runs out my parents and then they have a sweet moment i'm like oh man i know this is coming but it's still good and i'm I'm, i really like her making the decision you know like the cream will be used for witnesses not for her parents like she's accepting she has to let them move move on absolutely Mm -hmm. um you mentioned the music band um the final battle uh has one of my favorite songs from an indie artist called tv on the radio uh, a song called wolf like me and i've never heard it in a movie before and it blew my mind because just man, Jordan, you got good taste in music, my guy. God, yeah. good, love it. Great, great, love, great sequence. I even love how Raul is just rocking out to the record player. Player, and then he notices is like, oh shit! And like my my friend's parents are are getting kidnapped. Yeah, yeah and yeah. just just bolts and leaves, and yeah, the music the music choices were great. Um, the entire set of the movie was great. The animation was absolutely stunning. But I do have to agree with Brandon with story wise. It this I like this movie a lot. I love all the aesthetics about it. I love the music choices of it, but the story itself, I don't know. I was trying to pinpoint any criticisms I have, but I really don't. But at the same time, the story didn't even grab me. The same night I saw it, I was talking about it with Fanny on my car right home from my party. And there are parts of it that I forgot. And I don't want to say this movie's forgettable. It's clearly not, just the animations will stick with you for a while. But if you were to tell, if I was to write exactly what happened, I would probably forget a good chunk of this movie, mm-hmm. and it, that's kind of a bummer. Because while I would say it's like, yeah, definitely go watch it. It's a good spooky movie, but it wasn't a spooky movie that really just like grabbed me. You know, does that make sense at all? Am I or am I just rambling? No, I don't. I wouldn't. I mean, this is a Halloween movie. I wouldn't call this like a horror spooky movie. It's yeah. more like. Halloween vibes. Yeah. It's spoopy. It's spoopy. Yeah, it's spoopy. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I don't think this movie's going out to haunt you. It's a stop motion kids movie. Yeah, I um uh I I, I kind of I think I think it's you know, I don't want to say that. Um oh I, well, why not? No, I just I don't have a fully formed thought there. Oh, okay. Um so like I'll I'll just move on to something that I, I, I think that the 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 names are really cool. I really like uh, the names of, of a lot of the characters and places. My favorite being Bears Above. I think that's brilliant. That's, that Whoever thought good. about that? Well done, Henry Selleck. I love it. Yeah. So the, you had to pull the string whenever it talks. Right. That was good. So that was cute. Haunted teddy bear. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, uh, uh, my Manberg, who's our who's our uh, uh, Whistler Blade character with with uh, with the sister. That's a Blade movie that we didn't get to see. Her origin story. Right. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that guy in a wheelchair was real fun. Um, just collecting demons. Doesn't know that he's stealing children. Yeah. I'm Anything I'm else? I am super glad this movie gets to exist. I do wish it could have been in theaters even for a limited time. Just because yeah. uh, um movies like this, they they deserve to be on the big screen. Should we rate it? Mm-hmm. 
I believe we Wendell should. Wendell and Wild. Mm, I think it's a nine out of ten. Huh? Wow. Nice. Yeah, uh, I would probably go with an eight out of ten. Hmm? Yeah. I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I gotta give it a seven out of ten. That's fair. That's fair. I I really like it. Yeah, it's a, it's under Coraline for me, as far as his films go. Uh, I would also give it a seven. Hell yeah. Um, cool. Shall we get into Ooh. our book club? Let's book it. <laughs> 